Hey y'all, it's Anime Kim, and today I'm going to be reviewing Auto Firenze from Common Place to World Strongest Episode 1. And y'all wondering, what did I think specifically about this episode? I thought it was eh, a bit better than okay, honestly. Because, let me explain why. Now, I do like the main protagonist, Nagumo. And I do like how this episode establishes his goal, which is to get vengeance against the people that did betray him. Because Nagamo was, pre was pretty much uh, a guy in his fantasy saying that's not a good fighter, so he went along with the party, but then one of his female friends is like, oh yeah, don't go, I had a bad dream, but then he goes anyway. And then they get stuck fighting this, this guy hits a crystal, they teleport into like this dangerous part of the dungeon, and then he tries to like help everyone get away safely, but the thing is though, while he's helping everyone get away safely, this guy betrays him, and then he gets locked down on the lower levels where he's in danger, and then his arm gets ripped off and shit. And during all this, here's what I, like during all this, all this was pretty interesting I gotta say. But, here's the thing though. While it was interesting, this episode did kind of feel rushed, though, because, for one, the betrayal against him, I feel like it doesn't have a lot of oomph, because, at least from the place where our main protagonist is, which I'm assuming is a school, we didn't get to see much of that school, except for, like, little flashes and bits, so when he does get betrayed, I'm just like, oh, okay, he got betrayed, okay. Well, in other fantasy animes, when they do want to have a betrayal scene, like saying Tate no Yusha with Nao Fumi, they would dedicate like an hour special with getting the, the setting established and then getting him to know the um, character that's gonna betray him, and then boom, here it's like, oh, there's a betrayal. Mm, I mean, okay, and that's it. Which kind of felt rushed there. And then in addition to that, while watching the episode, um, aside from that, so there really wasn't anything wrong with it. Because the sequences where he does lose his arm against the beast does show to does go to emphasize that this setting is dangerous. So there were positives, and in addition to that, seeing him like use his smarts to get rid of some creatures like setting traps and then eating them and all that to survive did give it a sense of nice grittiness. So there were some positive elements to this episode, and in addition to that, Nagabo himself is a pretty interesting character. I gotta say. He's a guy you can root for. You want him to, at the very least, get his payback. So it has that going for him, too. Now, in saying all this, though, because I did like Nagumo, the character, and while and with the story, I'd say it has a relatively interesting premise. I just feel it's a bit rushed in execution while saying all of that. The animation quality is, at times, it's kind of like uh, doo-doo. Because... There are at times immersive, immersive freaking CG, let's just be real. There was the Bahamut looking creature that was CG, it looked kind of repulsive. And there is these sequences that these thunder things were attacks were used. And when the rocks fell apart, it kind of looked a bit dog shitty-ish. So there are moments where you look at the animation and you're like, eh, I've seen better in other fantasy animes. So from a technical standpoint, this anime isn't the greatest. From the animation standpoint, but from the art standpoint, I'd say the character designs are pretty decent. With the only redeem, with the only character design that's legitimately good, I think is Nagumo's. But everyone else's, it's like uh, they kind of feel semi from like other fantasy animes. But the creature designs that are hand drawn look at the very least good. So it has that going for it. And the voice performances I did like, like it actually sounded like the person was in pain when the main character was screaming. So there is that. Now, aside from that specific element, other things I enjoyed about this episode were the opening was pretty good, but the ED wasn't that good. And I'd say taking all these factors into consideration, I'm going to rate this episode a 5.5 out of 10. Which is still a smidge above average in my book, because in my skill, 1 is abysmal, 10 is exceptional, and 5 is average. And anything above that is a bit above average to good. And the reason why I gave it a 5.5 out of 10 is because, while I did like some elements in it, it 
felt like it didn't give things to breathe, so maybe hopefully it can get things going in the second episode. Now, would I recommend this to people to watch? Well, I can only recommend this for any people that really like fantasy enemies with revenge elements. But other than that, I don't know if I can quite recommend this because it's pretty much the only hook because sometimes the writing feels a bit rushed at times for the reasons I mentioned. I would have liked to see some characterization for some of the people that attended this, the school of Nagumo that he was in, maybe before we go on this crazy ass mission and aside from that the animation kind of does have my enjoyment if either one of those two elements would have been good this would have easily been a 7 or 8 out of 10 in my book at least going off of the first episode had it been had it done those elements but I still think it's a bit above average because there was cool things our main character surviving and then making things like fucking guns with like a low amount of materials was pretty badass I gotta say so anyways, guys and gals, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment out your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. All right, thank you all so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.